Speaking of blue Steelers, I got the tip of her in law, so I'm gonna continue on here, get your strap on, five point harness. We're gonna go full dorkgasm on the steel. Steel is an amazing, miraculous material. You got stainless steels, you got tool steels, you got steels for structures, you got steels. It's an amazing fucking material. You look at the phase diagram and you can't make heads or tail of it. When you first look at it, you got no fucking idea what's going on. You got alphas, you got gammas, gender, fluid, all this stuff going on. Is it a he, is it a she, is it a they? It is JFM. There's a ton of shit going on. But globally, if we look at it, we can sort of understand just in layman's terms what is going on. And I'm gonna try and do that for you here. To the benefit of proper gravitas, we add some reference materials. I will remind you, kind viewers, that uh, YouTube video is not a doctoral dissertation and any omissions we make are in the name of concision. That was a challenge for me to sort of grasp what's going on here on a cursory level. It's going to be even more challenging to explain what's going on, especially in terms that us 200 pound shop gorillas can understand. Essentially, we're going to do an analog just at first here. The analog is you have a glass of water and you have salt. You add salt to the water, you mix it in, it dilutes it. You add more salt, more salt, more salt. Eventually, that solution can't take any more salt. If you want to put more salt in the water, what do you do? You heat it up. And now you can put in more salt. But as it cools back down, the salt comes out of solution. So, the iron is the water, and the carbon is the salt. We're gonna start with low carbon steel, mild steel. That's hollow structural steel tubing. That's the stuff we weld with every day. That is steel. When you think steel, this is the steel, low carbon. So we have less than 0.2%, and that is called austenite. Austenite is very good at dissolving carbon. It has a structure like this. If we look at it, iron atoms in a cube that is face-centered cubic. That means there is an iron atom in the middle of each face. This allows it to dissolve a lot of carbon because it's easy to pop one of these out and put in a carbon atom. Now this scale is temperature. As we come down in temperature, nice and slowly, it forms ferrite. Now mixed with the ferrite is still austenite, but the ferrite is a different crystal structure. Iron atoms again, but instead it's body-centered cubic, which means there is only one iron atom in the middle of this cube. That makes it a lot harder for carbon to pop in and change out one of these atoms in solution. So this, what happens is you have a whole bunch of carbon not in this case, but you have uh, more carbon than you can dissolve, just like the salt in the water. It pops out and you get a tiny bit of cementite. What is cementite? It is iron carbide. Now, recall the paragon of materials, Kunstein tunglide, WC, water closet, no, tungsten carbide super hard material will cut just about anything in the shop it's an incredible material super hard super brittle so cementite is iron carbide and we get just a tiny bit of that whatever can't stay in solution with the carbon changes into iron carbide as we come down in temperature we start to grow grains of ferrite and also grains of perlite and what perlite is is laminar stacks of this cementite and ferrite so what we get is different grains together almost like an aggregate like a stone you know when you compact stone and and clay it bonds together real nice that's what we're getting we're getting ferrite which has been changed austenite we cool it down, it changes the structure to ferrite, drops out some carbon. That carbon gets picked up into perlite, which is laminar, and then those perlite grains grow together, the ferrite grains grow together, all intermixed, and that is how we get mild steel. So we want to make a tool steel, so we add lots of carbon to it. We're at 1.4% carbon here on the austenite. If we take that and we cool it slowly, 
what happens is more and more carbon falls out of solution. So we get more and more ferrite and more and more cementite. But the ratio here of ferrite grains to perlite grains changes and we end up getting something more like this where the whole structure is strictly perlite. Now, if you're making a tool steel, you want it hard. You want it to be hard. So what we do is instead of cooling it slowly, we cool it very, very rapidly. We quench it. So in order to get a nice hard tool steel, instead of allowing this to cool slowly and forming these perlite and ferrite grains in different proportions, depending on the quality of the steel we want, what we do is we quench it. We go from a high density, face centered cubic austenite to a low density, body centered tetragonal, 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 no, that's right, uh, martensite. And what that is, it's not a cube now. This, this front face is a rectangle. It's elongated and it's also lower density. We haven't allowed a whole bunch of the carbon to get out of there. So this is under a great deal of strain. One, because it's a lower density, it needs to expand. Two, because there's a whole bunch of carbon atoms still in solution that want to get the fuck out, but they can't because they're locked rigidly by this crystal lattice structure. It's no longer uh, movable. They, they can't move, they can't migrate. The carbon atoms can't migrate the way they did here when they had time to do it. This makes this structure very rigid, prone to breaking, but also very, very hard. So when we're talking about steel, we are talking about iron and carbon in different proportions and how we allow those to go in and out of solution determines their characteristics and it's a whole it's an incredible incredible material 